Hello friends, welcome to this session on facet sequence concept and principles. I am Jaydeep Sharma from Indira Gandhi National Open University, New Delhi. So, I will be taking up this session wherein I plan to discuss concepts related to facet and its sequencing. You all know that the theory of library classification was given by S. R. Ranganathan and this all that we discussed today has been given by him only. So, it is basically the postulational approach that he gave which we will be discussing today and particularly his postulational approach for knowing how to sequence different facets. This session will be of use to any bachelors of library information science student. In fact, a person interested in library information science, a person working in library and doing library classification work will also find this useful. So, we will be discussing what is a facet, we will also try to identify a facet and we will be discussing the postulational approach, why postulational approach and why facet sequence because he has identified other postulates also to identify facets, but why we are not able to sequence those facets for that he has given other principles. So, this is all that we intend to discuss today. So, let us start with the definition of facet. Uh, Ranganathan has defined facet as a generic term to denote any component of a compound subject, basic subject or an isolate idea and is also its ranked forms, terms and numbers. So, what he means to say is that whenever we talk of a compound subject or an isolate idea, there are facets. So, in a compound subject, there are facets, in uh, compound isolate ideas also, there may be facets. Now, these facets have names, they have terms, they also are denoted by numbers. So, all these are denoted as facets. He has also defined facet as a generic term to denote isolate idea, facet term and focal number. So, in his scheme of classification that he gave that the colon classification, he has given all these in particular for different disciplines and he calls these disciplines as basic classes wherein he has enumerated all these given notation also for them that is why we say focal numbers also. So, our prime aim today is to really know the mechanics, the idea the philosophy and the methodology behind all these aspects of identifying facets, putting them in a particular order and that particular order is useful for anyone who wants to have access to this knowledge which is available in the form of different kinds of books in the library. Moving further, when we talk of facet, we need to identify a facet. Now, how do we identify a facet? and how do we identify in a particular place, in a particular order for that particular facet. For that, Ranganathan has given postulational approach to library classification. You would have uh, seen other videos also, other discussions also, wherein you would have been introduced to postulational approach, but since for this particular session, we need to understand postulational approach. I would like to recapitulate a little bit on postulational approach and then continue with that. Now, a postulational approach entails postulate. 
Rangnathan has given postulates in postulational approach and therefore, we need to know what is a postulate. He says a postulate is an assumption about which we cannot say that it is right or wrong. It we can only say a postulate is helpful or it is unhelpful. You cannot say it is right or wrong. In our daily life also in otherwise in our way it is a way of life wherein we have postulates and we use those postulates because they help us in our work. We cannot say they are right or wrong, but they are helpful therefore, we have those postulates. So, we say postulate is an assumption that is helpful in carrying out our work and particularly when we are talking of work here it is classification of documents. So, I think up to now it is clear that a postulational approach involves use of postulates and here when we are talking of postulates here we are talking of postulates in the context of library classification. These postulates have been given by Ranganathan because they help us to do library classification. So, postulational approach is an approach given by Ranganathan for classification of documents based on certain assumptions and these assumptions have been made because they are helpful for our work of library classification. Now, why does he give this postulational approach? Could we have done library classification without postulational approach? Why he has given postulational approach? The reason is that when we classify documents in a library, these documents are multifaceted. They are multidimensional, they involve different subjects. These subjects may be related to each other in different directions, in different planes, in different dimensions. But when we classify them, we give them certain notation, we give them class numbers, these multidimensionality is reduced to unidimensionality. The subjects which have relations across different di directions and dimensions, they have to be mapped by notation in one dimension only. So, this conversion of these relations into one dimension requires use of postulates. We need to have certain assumptions to reduce this multidimensional relationships among subjects into one dimension along a linear dimension that is why he has given this postulational approach. Just recapitulating you would have seen he has given different postulates like postulate of basic facet, postulate of fundamental categories, postulate of facet sequence. Now, according to postulate of basic facet, he says that every subject whether it is a compound subject, it is a complex subject or it is a basic subject, it has to have a basic facet. So, this is one postulate. Now, you can very well see by this statement that you cannot prove right or wrong. You can say yes, it is there till you identify a subject where it does not happen, where there is no basic facet, but then you will see that it is always there. So, this assumption, but then he has defined basic focus or basic facet or basic subject in a particular way and that satisfies that definition justifies this statement which is postulate of basic facet. Now, postulate of fundamental categories beside a basic facet a compound subject may have an isolate subject uh, facet, it could be one or more than one isolate facet. So, for that also he has given a postulate which you are very well aware of you would have learnt in your earlier sessions. Now, postulate of facet sequence a subject which is compound or complex in nature will have more than one facet. Now, how do you identify these facets and how do you place these facets for that he has given these postulates of facet sequence like he has given a postulate of first facet. According to this postulate he tries to identify and helps us uh, help helps the classifiers that will be what will be the first facet and he says it is the basic facet which is the first facet. Similarly, he has given postulate of concreteness wherein he says how to place these different isolates in a particular order and for that he has says it is decreasing concreteness the way you put these facets in a particular manner. Now, similarly postulate of first facet sequence within a round within the last round and level and cluster. So, we have already understood the postulate of basic facet that it says that the first facet 
the every subject has a basic facet and the first facet is the basic facet in a particular subject. Now, when he talks about the other facets, he has given the postulate of fundamental categories, which he says that every isolate idea in a particular subject is a manifestation of one or other fundamental categories. So, whatever isolate facets are there in a subject, they are a manifestation of one or more fundamental categories, which he has identified as personality, matter, energy, space and time, which he indicates as P, M, E, S and T. So, these are the five fundamental categories, which are the different isolate facets that are present in a particular subject. Now, how to identify these? He says, though he has enumerated as P, M, E, S, T, but he says you identify time is easiest to identify and time is as we understand time, it could be years, days, hours, weeks or seasons. So, it is very easy time as we understand as time. Space again, he says the geographical space as we understand, this is what is meant by space. We all know that we have already learnt energy he says that it is a manifestation of action of one kind or the other and that is what is denoted by E. Matter is matter material or matter property and the last which remains is personality. So, the personality is most concrete, but when we have to identify these he goes in the reverse direction and he says as a method of matter of residues he says that what remains the residual part in a particular subject is identified as a manifestation of personality. Now, we have identified the different facets in a subject. Now, what is the sequence of these facets? For that, he has given postulates of facet sequence, wherein he says that the basic facet is the first facet and the isolate facets are the facets that follow the first facet. And what is the order of these isolate facets? He says the order is the postulate of concreteness he has given. He says that these are placed in order of decreasing concreteness. So, the decreasing concreteness says personality is most concrete and similarly next in order of concreteness is matter, next energy, next is space and time is the least concrete. So, he has mentioned the order of these facets as basic facet followed by personality, matter, energy, space and time. Then further he has given facet, uh, postulate of facet sequence within a round. He says within a whenever the first energy occurs in a subject after that new round starts. So, the first occurrence of energy in a subject starts the second round. So, this is what is the postulate given. Similarly, postulate of level he says uh, fundamental categories personality and matter may occur more than once in a round and these occurrences more than once in a particular round are said to be known as levels of personality and matter. So, this is how he has defined level, levels. Now, postulate of level cluster, he says that facets of different levels of the same fundamental category within a round of facets within the same round should be kept together. So, if personality occurs more than once in a particular round means all those levels of personality should come together. Similarly, matter occurring once, twice, thrice in a particular round should be put together. They should not be separated from each other. This is another postulate. Then he has given the principles of helpful sequence. So, why he has given the principles of helpful sequence? Now, you know up till now we have followed how to identify a facet. Then we have also followed that there every subject has a basic facet which corresponds to the basic class. Basically, in a library when we arrange documents, we arrange documents as we learn knowledge, as we try to know this knowledge, understand knowledge, learn knowledge and we all know that we all would accept that we learn and know knowledge as per as, dis the, as per the disciplines that exist in this universe of knowledge. We do not identify, we do not learn or uh, know knowledge in uh, as a holistic uh, uh, in totality. We do it from the point of view of certain aspects and these are called disciplines. 
and these disciplines are nothing nothing but the same as he identified these as basic subjects and these basic subjects correspond to what we call as the basic facet. So, he says every subject whether it is a basic subject or a compound subject or a complex subject has one facet at least and that one facet is basic facet. So, if it is a simple subject there will be only one facet that will be the basic facet. But if it is a compound subject, there will be a basic facet plus an isolate facet. It could be more than one isolate facet also. So, he has identified this isolate facet as a manifestation of the five fundamental categories. And these five fundamental categories we all know are personality, matter, energy, space and time. But they may occur more than once in a particular subject. For that, he has given the concept of rounds and he says that every time an energy occurs in a particular subject after that a new round starts. So, first occurrence of energy immediately after that second round, second occurrence of energy immediately after that third round. Similarly, it will be like that. Now, within a particular round a fundamental category can occur more than once. This occurrences of more than once of a fundamental category are nothing but levels. So, personality occurring twice, thrice in a particular round is said to belong to different levels and if postulate says that all these occurrences of a fundamental category within a particular round is called as levels and they are put together. Another postulate he has given is that of the postulate of last round where he says that space and time occur only in the last round. I have been mentioning about personality matter. I said an occurrence of energy means next round. I also said within a particular round personality matter may occur more than once. So, you might be wondering why I am not mentioning of space and time. Actually, Ranganathan says space and time can occur only in the last round. They will not happen before the last round. So, that is another postulate that has been given by Ranganathan. Now, we have been able to identify these, but then now as we said that more than once a particular fundamental category may also occur in a particular round. Now, we, we, have, we have identified the different facets, we have identified their, uh, their order also, but within a particular facet I said if a fundamental category occurs more than once it is said to belong to different levels and they are to be placed together. But how to decide which one first, which one second, which one third? So, we have not been able to see from the postulates the sequence of these facets if a same fundamental category occur more, more than once. For that, Ranganathan has given principles of helpful sequence. So, I would again clarify here that postulates that he has given are they help us to identify and also put in a particular order different fundamental categories. The manifestations of different fundamental categories in a subject can be identified and placed in relation to each other according to the postulates of facets. But if there the order of the occurrence of the same fundamental category in a round has to be seen, we need to refer to principles that Ranganathan has given and in that he has given principles of helpful sequence. He says a fundamental category, a category occurring more than once can be decided by using principles of helpful sequence and in that one of the principles of helpful sequence given by him is the wall picture principle. And what is this wall picture principle? Actually Ranganathan explains things in very simple way and he tries to correlate things from other fields of knowledge or from our daily occurrences in our life. Like this principle which he says as wall picture principle, he correlates it to a wall and a picture on the wall. He says if you want to have a picture on a wall, can you think of the picture without the wall? You cannot. Therefore, he calls it as wall picture principle and he says that if two facets a and B of a subject, mind you two facets A and B of a subject 
the, that means this subject is multidimensional has more than one facet these facets are denoted as a and b now these facets are of the same fundamental category they are in a particular round now we have said they have to be placed together one of the postulates says now whether a first or b first whether it will be a b or b a he says if they are related to each other as if a wall and a picture are related to each other that means that the concept behind b will not be operative unless the concept behind a is considered even as a mural picture is not possible unless the wall exists to draw upon then the facet a should precede the facet b i again explain that if the facets that are to be put in a particular sequence are for example a and b and they are related to each other as if a is not b is not possible without a then we will say we will place a first b second so this is the wall picture principle now let me give you an example i am classifying a book wherein i say treatment of skin diseases i again read out it is treatment of skin diseases now you see here there are different facets one is skin the other is disease and the third is treatment now skin is nothing but personality here disease is energy treatment is also energy now this is the situation now skin we all know that personality will come first this is the most concrete now there are two different energies here this this is disease and treatment now correlating this to the wall picture principle this concept of treatment will not be operative unless the concept of disease is there therefore it has to be disease first treatment second therefore you can very well easily understand and follow this principle and classify this book as skin followed by disease followed by treatment similarly let me give you another example use of computers in teaching primary school children now here the uh, there are different facets one is uh, te teaching the other is primary school children and the third is use of computers now primary school children primary school education is very well clear it's the personality focus but the here we are having the energy teaching and the tool is computers now this here again according to the wall picture principle teaching will come first then use of computers so you can think of many such examples where you can apply wall picture principle and decide the order of the different facets and these are belonging to the same fundamental category and these are different levels occurring within a particular round i can give you one more example like let us say that the uh, the the subject of the book is uh, is uh, is uh, let us say a english drama and maybe you specify a particular drama now here it is literature and then it is literature of english and this is drama or it is a particular form drama and maybe it is by a particular author here again the wall picture principle guides us that it has to be literature first the basic facet is literature and then we go to the the uh, the uh, uh, language english language and then the drama and then drama by certain person now a corollary of wall picture principle that is whole organ principle and it says that if in a subject facet b is an organ of facet a then a should precede b so it's very simple and uh, this can be correlated to uh, the whole organ otherwise also like we have given example of uh, medicine we have given here we have a whole organ like we say digestive system stomach or we say the respiratory system lungs 
Now, these are examples of whole organ and Ranganathan says that you place the whole first organ second or you say uh, education here education is a whole curriculum is an organ. So, he says that whenever two facets are related to each other as whole organ they should uh, be placed in the order of whole first followed by organ. So, very simple statements, but then these are very easy to, to uh, these are easy in a way that when we classify follow these principles the sequence that emerges the order that emerges is a very convenient order for the users. Another corollary of the whole organ principle is the cow calf principle and he says if a facet A and another facet B belonging to the same subject mind you same subject are not to be separated though they are distinct. They are distinct we are very very much clear A and B are distinct, but he says they should not be separated from each other and he gives a, an example that they, they should be such that they their relation is a, as a milch cow and it is unweaned calf they cannot be separately sold they are two different entities, but they are kept together because they are dependent on each other they cannot exist without each other. Therefore, he says even if they are sold they are sold together. So, he says such entities if the such a relation between two entities uh, is there they should be placed together they should not be separated from each other this is the cow calf principle. Now, let us move to the another corollary of the wall picture principle that is actant action actor tool principle. So, this this is a four way relation and it says if in a subject facet B denotes action some action is taking place on a facet A. So, B is the action and it is the action is taking place on facet A by facet C. So, action on A and action is B and action is being done by C and using a tool D. So, A is the actant, B is the action, C is the actor and D is the tool. So, an actor doing an action on something using a tool. So, the actor is C, action is B, actant is A, tool is D he says that the order in which they should be placed is A, B, C, D. So, you can think of an example where you say the farmer harvesting the field using a tractor. So, here the action is harvesting, the actor is farmer, action is harvesting, uh, you, you are using a uh, tractor for that, that is tool. So, the order should be A, B, C, D. So, it has to be the actant is field, action is harvesting and actant and the, act the person doing action is farmer and, act and the tool is the tractor. So, actant, action, actor, tool. So, it is the field, it is the farmer, it is farming or harvesting using a harvester or a tractor. So, this is how he has explained these uh, different principles of facet sequence. So, what have we discussed? Let us summarize, try to summarize these. We have tried to identify what is a facet. We have seen that facet is nothing but an aspect and when you talk of a basic subject only, it is the basic facet as one of the facets. It may be a compound subject and compound subject may have a basic facet and an isolate facet these are two different facets. He has identified that every subject will have at least one facet and that is basic facet. If in addition to a basic facet there is a facet it is called isolate facet and basic facet corresponds to the discipline of study of a user or a learner. Isolate facet he has identified as manifestation of five and only five fundamental categories which he has defined as personality, matter, energy, space and time. He says that the first facet in a compound or a complex subject 
has to be basic facet. Beyond that, the isolate facets, he has put them in order of decreasing concreteness. The first will be personality, matter, energy, space, and time. So, he has he has guided us to identify these in a reverse order. Time is the easiest to identify, then space, then matter, then energy, matter, and personality. So, personality is the most concrete, but the most difficult to identify using method of residues. So, till now we have been able to identify facets, we have also put them in particular order, but with he has also identified that the personality and matter may occur more than once in a particular round and he calls these as levels and he says uh, more than one occurrence of a particular fundamental category has to be put together. But to decide the order of these particular uh, multi occurrences of a particular fundamental category in a round, he says we have to follow the principles of helpful sequence and that principle is nothing but the wall picture principle, which he says uh, the two facets are related to each other as if a wall is related to a picture. So, a picture first followed by the wall or pic wa the wa wall first followed by the picture, because you cannot think of the picture without the wall and he has given corollaries to this in the form of whole organ principle or cow calf principle or act and action actor tool principle. So, as classif classifiers if we follow his principles and postulates that have been given by Ranganathan, we can very well classify our books in a scientific way that will help our users and also place our books in an order which is most convenient to our users. Thank you.